to be doing today is fixing these joy cons that are suffering from stick drift. What is stick drift you might ask? It is when you're using these analog control sticks and you may push down on an analog stick and it may go in an entirely different direction or the analog stick could get stuck and it will really truly mess up your game while you're playing. What happens is over time, these analog sticks get worn out because some of the first batches from Nintendo were made kind of cheaply and wore out over a period of time. Now, in order to actually test if we have stick drift in these or not, we need to first turn on the Nintendo Switch on the bottom that there is a settings, there's like a gear or a cog icon near the end by the power button. You will select it, controllers and sensors. Then you'll want to push to the right and you'll want to go right to where below to where it says update controllers and click on collaborate control sticks. I wanna try the left one first, this one. And what we wanna do is push this to the right and hold it until it comes in here. Now this plus sign in the center bullseye should always stay centered. So if I hold the controller down, uh, bottom left and I let go, it should return back to the center in a plus sign like this. Same with the top, I'm gonna do upper left and you see how that's floating around right there. That means there's drift and that's how you can test to see if there's truly drift in your Joy-Cons and you can see it's still drifting around. Whenever it does this, that means there's a problem. And I'm gonna go to upper right and let go. And as you can see, it's still drifting. Now I'm gonna try lower right and let go. And it still is drifting. Now I can click on the X button to try to collaborate this in the software. In collaborating, it'll want you to push the analog stick toward the triangle and release. And as you can see, even as it's trying to collaborate, it's not going back to the center. This Joy-Con is definitely having a stick drift. It won't even go through the recalibration process. As you can see, it fails. So that's how you can test if it's software based or you need to update your Joy-Cons. You just wanna go into the settings first and try to recalibrate it through the Nintendo Switch software. And if that doesn't work and you get this problem as you see here, it is definitely the hardware of the Joy-Con. I'm going to test the right Joy-Con, this one over here. And to test this one, I just simply push to the left. And I'm going to go through all the different directions. It's responding better than the one on the left but I did get a little bit of drift right here. I'm going to try to collaborate it. See, it's starting to drift right there. As you can see, it's not in the center. Then I'm going to push down and it's not going back to center. I'm gonna push left, it's not going to center. Push up, you'll turn the analog stick 
in a 360 circle until it says calibration complete. And if you just see that it had some drift right here, it's kind of hard to see, but it still has drift problems. Not as bad as one on the left Joy-Con, but it's still there. And it's gonna to need to be fixed. I want you to know that I did order a kit online in order to repair these Joy-Cons. Here are the analog sticks that I purchased in order to fix the stick drift. Now you can order these in different colors if you wanna mix it up a little bit, but I went ahead and got the factory color, black. And as you can see here, that it came with a set of tweezers, a plastic spudger to pry apart the Joy-Cons, a regular Phillips screwdriver, I believe it's a Phillips Zero, and also a tri-wing screwdriver. Uh, because when you go to take apart the Joy-Cons, it will have on the outer shell tri-wing screws. And right here is just a magnetic mat that I'm gonna be putting the screws on as I work. You don't have to have that, but that's just gonna hold the screws and keep them from getting lost. Now, first up, I'm going to be working on the left Joy-Con. So we're gonna turn over the Joy-Con and all of these screws, there's gonna be one, two, three, and four. There's gonna be four tri-wing screws that you're gonna to want to remove. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. And then I'm gonna place the screws on the mat. Now these are all one size, so you do not have to be careful in mixing these screws up, just that you don't lose them. They can go back in any order. And now we need to take off this one up here. on there a little bit tight but it's coming out no problem then we're going to lay it over there now you should be able to pry the controller open and i'm going to turn it over right here and right at the edge of this right here i'm going to use this plastic spudger and I'm gonna use plastic because metal could damage this shell because it is made out of plastic. So I'm gonna use plastic and I'm gonna put it in this lip right here. Just slip it in there and I'm gonna take it gently around here through this. Until it pops up and I'm gonna do that all the way around. Now, it has popped up, but what I'm going to be doing is when we, before we open this Joy-Con, you're gonna open it up like a book, like this. The reason I'm gonna open it like a book, there are some cables in here that are connected to the logic board of the controller, and they are fragile, and if you, open them the wrong way, you could break them. So we're just gonna open this ever so gently, just like this. Open it like a book, just like that. I will show you the cables that could get damaged if you open it the wrong way. It is this cable right here and this one right here. That is why we need to open it like a book. As I was saying, Right here where I'm circling, you can disconnect the battery if you want. But I suggest if you're a beginner that you do not 
that you do not disconnect this battery right here because this port is notorious for breaking if you do not remove it right. And it's not necessary that you have to remove it. As long as you are careful while you're in here, then you're not gonna need to remove the battery. So I'm gonna do it the procedure without removing the battery so we don't take a chance on this battery uh, port breaking on the logic board. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is you will see right here, this is where the battery is. We're gonna to wanna to take this plastic spudger, we're gonna put it underneath right here and push up. Now, you wanna be gentle and you may need to pry it back and forth a little bit because there is an adhesive sticker underneath this battery. And you can kind of hear it giving away there and letting go. So when that lets go, see, you just let this, you let this just hang down this battery and get it out of your way. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to switch over to that Phillips screwdriver. It's gonna be a zero, zero Phillips. I'll put a link to this kit that comes with these tools in the video description. There's going to be a screw right here. We're gonna be taking out this screw and this screw and this one right here. Okay, I'll go ahead and take out the bottom one first. And these screwdrivers are magnetic. And again, these screws are the same size, so uh, you will not get them mixed up. And again, I'm just putting them on the magnetic mat so that I don't lose them. And there's three screws that I removed. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove this part, which includes this shoulder button. And you're gonna to wanna to fold it to the right like a book, again, because there is this little cable right here and you don't want to stretch it or pull on it. You don't want it to break. The only cable that you need to release from this plastic uh, connector, there is a safety tab right here. You see it's black. Now what you want to do, you want to take the point or the ridge of this plastic spudger and just gently get in there and pull up gently. And this little connector is gonna be straight up and down like that. And when it's like that, you can take a pair of tweezers and that's what I'm gonna do. You can grab that little cable and get it out of the way. Now this is only gonna happen in the left Joy-Con because the right Joy-Con is gonna be easy as you see. But anyways, you wanna hold that little cable back and it's gonna reveal the two screws in the analog. It's gonna reveal these two screws that attaches the analog thumbstick. Now, you are going to need to remove one more ribbon cable and that's the one that goes to the analog joystick itself so you go to this tab again on this plastic port and you're just going to move it up gently and then you'll take the tweezers again like i'm going to do and you'll just pull it up out like so And you can see that pulled up out of there. You'll see that there are these two screws holding in the analog control thumbstick. 
All you need to do is remove these two screws. And what I'm doing to make it easier, I'm actually, I'm putting my fingers underneath of this case here. I'm putting my fingers underneath the shell because the table is a flat surface and I'm holding it above the table so it'll give this room so it doesn't push on it. So I'm taking out this screw and uh, these screws are slightly different. So I'm putting them away from the other screws and I'm just putting them on the magnetic mat. Now, as you can see, this analog stick is ready to come out. Now you have to be careful and you may need to wiggle this a little bit because there is a plastic ring underneath here that kind of holds it into place and you don't want this ring to pop out. But if it does, you can set it back in place. But as you can see, this one did not pop out and it is still in place. So with that being said, this is finally out. This was the problem that was causing the stick drift. This is the old analog stick from the Joy-Con. What we're gonna do next is simply take one of the new analog sticks. Where I'm gonna put the cable, feed it underneath right there. I'm gonna feed it underneath here this cable and then I'm just going to put it right in here wiggle it just a little bit as it's going to want to fall into place once it falls into place that these two screws are tight and they are this ribbon cable that goes from the analog control stick to the to the logic board. I'm going to make sure it is connected. And it may take you a couple of minutes to get it just right, but Take your time, you want to push that connector in. You'll see it on the ribbon cable at the bottom. It is a little harder so it can be pushed in easier. And once you get it pushed in, then that plastic brace that you had to lift up to take it out, well, we're going to do the opposite. We're actually going to push it down so that it locks the cable in place. Now, you remember this cable that we had to unlock from here so that we could get access to that second screw and take out the analog stick. Well, it is now time to put that one back into place. Again, you can take your time. There's no rush in this. You just wanna make sure that you get this right and you can grab the end of the cable because that's where it's harder at that's where it's not as brittle as at the end on the connector and once it's in there we're going to lock that down again we're going to take that this little tiny plastic bracket we're gonna lock it back. Once it's locked back, you can see it looks like that right there. You'll be able to see these pins on these plastic ports. While we're in here, if the back shoulder button pops out, which a lot of times it will, I'm gonna show you how to put it back in. So first we're gonna take the right end of the shoulder button and I'm gonna insert it right here to where it's underneath the plastic. And then you'll see right in here is where the spring goes. And I'm gonna actually push down just a little bit and I'm gonna push to the left 
so that this little plastic notch is just a little bit under the shell up here. And if it's in place, you'll be able to just barely push on it and hear a click, just like this. Okay. We are ready for the next step. This right here, the first shoulder button that has the battery compartment connected to it, be gentle with the cable that's on it. And the cable is gonna to go to the right, right here. And you can see that the button is gonna be facing the top, the first shoulder button. And <clears throat> this is just gonna set on top of here like this. And make sure while you put this back on that you are clearing every cable and make sure that your cable to the shoulder button doesn't get caught up. Make sure you're clearing the wire to the battery. Once we get this on here, you're not gonna to need to worry about the second shoulder button anymore because the battery compartment that holds the first shoulder button is gonna hold that in place. So all we need is those three screws to put this back in place. We're gonna need one here. That's where the second screw goes. And again, do not tighten these too tight. Just get it snug. And then down here, there's a plastic little arm right there. And that's where it's gonna go. And then you will see on this battery compartment, <clears throat> when you go to put the battery back in, <clears throat> you wanna make sure that the battery is facing this way, the top of the battery where you can see the model number. And the reason being is the wire has to fit in the battery compartment right here to the right. You'll notice it has that negative symbol and the serial numbers where it needs to go. And then, then you can push the battery back into the battery compartment place and you can just put a very light pressure over the battery. And what this is doing, any adhesive that might still be there, it will go ahead and re-stick to the battery. And now gently, we're gonna close this like a book. Remember, this is the left Joy-Con. You wanna make sure that none of these cables are pinching as, I, as you close it back up. And you know, you can see it if it's pinching also right here. I'm gonna close this first. From this side and then this side and you click it all the way around and you will hear that clicking noise. Now I'm ready to put the tri-wing screws back in. And if you remember, there were four of them. Those are the four that I'm gonna be putting back in. So I'm gonna get my tri-wing screwdriver. I'm gonna start putting those in. Right here. And again, just get it uh, snug. That's, that's the word I'm gonna use, we'll snug it up. There is no sequence that you need to put these in. And again, I'm holding this up enough to clear the analog so it's not pushing down on that analog stick. I'm holding it up off the table. And these are snug and back together. So that means that the new analog stick is installed on your left Joy-Con. In my opinion, the left Joy-Con is the hardest by a little bit, but it's still pretty easy to do. So now, now once you are done and your controllers are ready, the Nintendo Switch that you're gonna be connecting them to. And go ahead and connect your Joy-Cons now. 
make sure they're locked in place so that you can hear them lock in place. And then you'll want to turn on your Nintendo Switch. You see down here these circles. We're going to want to put it over to this settings, this cog wheel or gear, whichever you want to call it. Press A. And over here you will see there are some settings. And you're going to scroll down to where it says controllers and sensors. So we're going to push A on that. And then we're going to scroll down to collaborate control sticks. Now that these analog sticks have been replaced, we need to recalibrate them to the Nintendo Switch. So we're gonna push A on that, and we're gonna first do the left one. So we're gonna push the left one to the right, and it should activate the collaboration. So we're gonna collaborate and push A, and it says push it to the right and release. Push down and release. Push left and release. Push up and release. Then it says do a 360. Calibration is complete. Now, remember how it floated before? Let's see if it floats. See, no longer floating. It goes right back to the center. And that means the left Joy-Con was a success in replacing the analog stick. That means you can now exit, push B to go back. And you're now ready to play your Nintendo Switch again. If this video helped you any, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, I will see you later.